My name is Antio, and I'm talking about Motel 6 and how me and the general manager are going at it. The treatment and the treatment of the general manager to me. I have been staying there since December. The first of December, around the, around the first of December, yeah. So I paying every day eighty around seventy six, eighty bucks a day to stay there. Um I ended up getting into it with the general manager because it seemed like no matter what you said on behalf of your own self, for whatever was going on, she didn't care. She would put you out at the drop of a hat. Like she was the worst person I ever encountered in my life. I paid from December 1st to January 15th. Um, the day I went to go pay my rent before I got put out there, I went to pay my rent at two o'clock in the morning because I paid early sometime. Well, I got down there and the, the other man, the, uh, active manager was telling me, well, we're not going to be able to rent to you no more. I asked her why. She said she didn't know. So I said, well, what do you mean you don't know? There has to be a reason why. And then, and then why in my mind are you waiting? I mean, if I hadn't went down there, they would have never told me anything. I'm just getting here to Decatur, Georgia. I don't know a soul here. Okay. The general manager called my room prior this and said that I had too much traffic. Now, mind you, I know maybe three people here. They come to see me and check on me, make sure I'm okay while I'm here. You know what I'm saying to you? So you have to like sign in, you know, to go see somebody there, I guess for security reasons. I understand that. But the manager herself, she put, she put your guests that come to see you. Like if I go, to, I went to booking.com. She, she'll put your guests under where you would, where you're signing, where you're uh, signing in for the room at, as if they live there with you, whatever the case may be. So your list gets longer and longer and longer. You never take them off. So I try to tell the general manager that she said, well, she doesn't care how it looks. Prostitution and drug dealing was going on there. Yeah, like I'm like, wait a minute, what? Like I don't know a soul here. I'm a full time student. That's it. I don't know anybody. I'm from Kansas City. You understand? Me and my dog. So. She said, well, she doesn't care. Unless if it continues, then I'm going to have to go. I'm like, I'm, and she wouldn't give me any opportunity to say anything else and hook up the phone. So I call corporate because I know she's a general manager. There's no, there's no higher anarchy other than her there. So I call corporate. Well, it's called uh, the customer experience or something like that. So I'm asking for corporate and they, said, they tell me, well, we, we advance this to corporate. Okay. So I tell them what I'm telling you now. And I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm sure she, this, lady, this woman has put out a man, a total blind man, it has a stick, you know, put him out at 2 a.m. because of some $20, 20 bucks he owed. He said, well, can I pay you tomorrow? No, she says to him. And then, um, so I call Corp, I said, Corp, I, I tell him, that, look, I'm pretty sure I feel, a lot of people here feel this way. They just want to say it because by the time they get up paying that four, that 440 every week, they don't have enough money to be thrown out on a on a humbug because somebody got a hair up their behind, you know. So I said I'll probably get thrown out with my exact words to them. Lo and behold, two days later she puts me out because when I go to pay my rent, that's when the that's when the I don't know can't rent to you thing goes on again. So I had all of from about three because by the time I got to back to my room I was pissed. I got to back to my room at about you know about three o'clock. Calm down. Had to figure something out. Now, I don't know. I sold in this town like that. You know what I mean? So what am I going to do? And I have, I have a whole dog with me. I ended up having to give my dog away. Who, mind you, she's nine. All she had was me and all I had was her. Okay. But at the time, what would I do? Because not, not, not every hotel down here accepts pets. But I had to make a move right now because this lady right here. OK, so I gave her to some people that I thought they would take care of her. I hope they're going to take care of her. You know, I mean, but still, that's it's that's, that's crazy when this is supposed to be a pet friendly establishment that I it was the reason why I went there. You know, so. I get where I'm going and uh, an employee of Moto 6 that works as an auditor. Calls me that evening and tells me, she said, Ann, I was looking in the computer and I read the reason why 
they would not rent to you anymore. I said, well, what was the reason? She says that the manager, Miss Sue's her name, wrote that I am a prostitute and that I have men in and out of my room every five to 10 minutes. If, if that's the case, even if, that, even if that was the case, that's a lot of people in and out every five, 10 minutes, wouldn't you say? Yeah. So then to add insult to injury, now she has put, because Booking got, Booking had gotten contact with him. You know what I mean? Time to find what's going on. They told Booking, the prominent reason why we would not rent to Ann again is because I was using counterfeit money to pay for my stay there. I guess from December until January 15th. Now, mind you, I was using my debit card in combination with money. So they wouldn't give you receipts. So I made sure that I used my debit card or something that, you know, I had a paper trail for myself and whatever. So unless my debit card has counterfeit money on it, and unless every single one of them auditors that took my money, that whole time I was there, because all of them did, then why didn't anybody call the police? Why didn't anybody call the police? From December, from December 1st to January 15th? That was a month and a half. Y'all let me use counterfeit money, but that's what you put on the, on the, on the, on the region. It's because she, she is the GM. So now... I had to hurry up and move somewhere in the middle of a storm, winter storm, snow, and my dog is gone. All because of this lady and her and her lies. That is that's unnecessary. And at first, I just wanted them to reach out to me. So I went on LinkedIn and all that, trying to get somebody to just reach out to me and say, you know, we're sorry for how she acted, whatever. Nobody at Motel 6 has said anything to me. And I do understand that they are sister companies. I get it. I don't even really care that as a consumer, you don't think that the average person doesn't think that they think most of all of them are one motel six. So I, would, I would thought somebody would say, you know, we're sorry about what happened to you, anything, but now I'm out for blood because I'm mad. And how dare she say that I'm a prostitute and I use counterfeit money the whole time I stayed at this place, making me look bad as hell. On top of it, I don't even know what to expect because what I expected the first time never happened. And that was very simple. You know, so I, I don't even know what to expect. I know what I want to happen. You know what I mean? I want to, I, I, I mean, I know what I want to happen. I want her to be fired. And then I want someone to reach out to me as if, you know, they're really, I mean, concerned about what's going on with people that stay in their, in their establishment. And the fact that my dog is gone.